The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that lesson, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> On All Saints Day, we pause to remember and give thanks to God for this, these precious gifts. These gifts of life that were given to us to breathe the breath of God with in life. Those who once were with us, those who we held and hold dear to our hearts. The saints that we celebrate today may no longer be with us, but they are not has been. They are actively involved in God's work, worshiping God around the throne. They're dancing around the throne of God, 10,000 by 10,000 as we dance around the throne this day. They're celebrating that hope that they are called to, as Paul reminded us in the scripture today. There's nothing has been about the God that we serve. We serve a God who is alive, a God who knows no limits, a God who doesn't know time and space like we do. God didn't get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and fall back on the clock. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> God is just as active with the saints from ages past as he is with the saints walking this earth today. As bad as it may seem on the highways and byways of this world, if anyone tries to tell you that this is the end in this world, this is only the beginning. Imagine Paul as he writes this epistle, and these first and second generation Christians, Paul writes about being among the first to put their hope in Christ. And the joy that he experiences from seeing the second generation of believers in Christ being called to that hope and watching them grow in Christ. When that first generation of Jewish Christians put their hope in Christ, they were hoping in God, who always was, always will be, the great I Am. God, who took absolutely nothing and spoke life into existence. They were hoping in God, who has the power to resurrect the dead. They were hoping in God, who has the power to make a new thing. Imagine how these early Christians felt as they saw God do a new thing. Faithful God, who was and is to come, was actively doing a new thing through Jesus Christ, 
the author and finisher of our faith. Imagine a group of 21st century believers gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. That would be us. Imagine that group of believers being called to that same hope. God has called us this day to be active in God's work. We're intertwined, we're co-crucified, we're resurrected with Christ. We are renewed in our baptisms, not just witnessing a new thing, not just seeing something happen over there and writing to people about it and noticing that something is happening to others, but we are right smack dab in the middle of that work. Just as those early Christians did, we put our hope in God, who always was and always will be. Today we celebrate that hope that we are called to. Today we gather as both saints and sinners from all the ages redeemed by Christ. And as divisive as this world may seem, the Holy Spirit calls us and gathers us, the body of Christ, as one. God turns the impossible into possible. All glory, laud, and honor be to you, our Redeemer.